What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Welcome back to the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. We got a loaded show today with some exceptional breaking news as well that just hit the airwaves. Now, kick back, relax, and come take a ride with your boy. Look, man, we just got some big news from one of the biggest stars, the biggest singers in college basketball having a career year, just declared for the WNBA draft. Also, we heard from Last Terrapoa and her status for LSU's first game tomorrow. On top of that, Coach Don Staley has made it known that this South Carolina team is not overlooking anyone. But before we get into all that, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button for all the latest and the greatest, and join our memberships. We got that exclusive content coming daily, weekly, whenever you need it. Now, let's get into it. You are now locked into the Live with Brandon Blakeney podcast. Here is your host, Brandon Blakeney. Now, UConn has their first opening matchup in the NCAA tournament against Jackson State on Saturday. But we got some breaking news from the Huskies before this game even tips. All-American center, forward center. She's been playing the five at UConn. She really a four. Aaliyah Edwards, who has been out with an injury to the face. She was injured in the Big East tournament, missed the last rounds of that tournament. But she announced one... We're expecting her to play. Master Leah Edwards is back, and we know that's a problem for the nation. But on top of that, she decided her future today with the announcement that she would be forgoing that extra year of eligibility, not coming back to UConn, and taking her talents to the WNBA. Edwards was first team all Big East. She's had an incredible senior season, 17.8 points per game, 9.3 rebounds, leading UConn in that category, and 2.1 assists, shooting 59.4% from the field. The 6'3 senior out of Kingston, Ontario, has really shined in her UConn career since she stepped foot on campus. She's gotten better every year, and she's decided to take her talents to the WNBA. Now, I've seen Edwards ranked as high as 7th in some mock drafts going to the Minnesota Lynx. So, you know, a good opportunity for her. And you think about her skill set and what she brings with her ability to stretch the floor, hit the three, play down low, body up, finish through contact, be an effective finisher around the rim, crash the glass, pass the ball as well. She can bring it up the floor a little bit. She can dribble it. You know what I'm saying? Create off the perimeter, like gifted passer, like we mentioned. You know, Edwards blocking shots. She does a lot, man. She's fundamentally sound, high IQ, high intangibles. I think she'll flourish at the WNBA level, to be honest with y'all. I think her best basketball is ahead of her. We've seen her be the other end of this one-two punch with UConn, her and Paige Beckers have carried this team through an injury-riddled season. And no secret there. We know all the injuries they've had to overcome. Edwards has played out of position. And she's flourished. She's continued to succeed. She's shown toughness, leadership, durability, and more importantly, for the next level, versatility. So, obviously going to be a top-10 draft pick. Going to be a successful in the WNBA. Um, As far as UConn, I think this really bolsters their chances, though, with Sarah Strong, the number one player in the 2024 class, who is considering UConn, North Carolina, and Duke in her final three. And this just opens up another spot to where I thought, you know, even playing alongside Aaliyah Edwards, if Sarah Strong committed to UConn that she would be slotted in at that four spot with Ice Brady possibly being the backup. But now maybe it's Ice Brady at the four. And, you know, you, hey, maybe they go small and put Strong at the five. Or maybe, you know, they put another big body at the five. I mean, you know, they're getting a lot of players back from injury. Majority of this senior class, well, other than, I won't say majority, but a lot of these players that are injured are, have decided to come back, other than Nika Mule and Aaliyah Edwards. So UConn's going to reload. 
If they land Sarah Strong, this is a huge loss, make no mistake. But if they can land Sarah Strong, it will very much so ease in that departure for them in this transition uh, with Paige Beckers leading the way. But I think this helps them with Sarah Strong. I mean, there's nothing stopping her from coming into stores and playing immediately and having a huge impact on this roster. I think this was the final domino for UConn to land Sarah Strong. I think for Goldman, I think she's headed to UConn. You know, I'm just going off of a gut feeling here. We know that they have been the favorites, though. Many analysts, uh, like myself, have noticed that she has been, the UConn has been the favorite, it seems like, to land Sarah Strong. And now with Aaliyah Edwards out of the way, there's nothing stopping her from coming in and being that number one low post option for UConn next season. So, it, hey, it could be a blessing and a curse. We'll see. But huge loss. They, they're they going to have to... uh find somebody to find to they got to find somebody to fill in and on that low post on that low post though they got to find somebody to fill in on the block they need a reliable low block scorer as Edwards was a rim protector um leading the team in rebounds they need a big that can crash the glass and be effective and it may just be a team effort because we've seen Paige Beckers hitting the glass as well, playing the four for this group at times. But it'll be interesting to see how UConn shakes out. Again, they have their first matchup on Saturday against Jackson State, proud HBCU. And we know now Aaliyah Edwards is gone after this season. Now the next domino to fall, will it be Sarah Strong? We're going to have to keep y'all posted on that. But sooner coming up games... As in tomorrow, South Carolina and LSU, who we've talked about a lot on this channel, tip off tomorrow their NCAA tournament runs. LSU, the defending champs, looking to defend their crown in the pool, the bracket of death, the region of death, man, with UCLA and Iowa in that con in that group, Colorado as well. So they've definitely got their uh, <laughs> their uh, their uh, ch challenge ahead. You know, they've got to cut it out for them. You know, that, that's going to be a tough region to get out of. So, we'll see. But they get it started against Rice at home. So, expecting, you know, LSU to come out and do their thing. We did get an update, though. We know last year, Poa, who was injured in the Ole Miss game in the SEC tournament, has been out for a few weeks. And we got an update from her. And also, Michaela Williams saying that she's 100% also. So, big news for the Tigers having their star freshman back healthy. But also, an update from last year, Poa, as well. I feel really good. I feel excited. Um, recovering can you give us a status for tomorrow? Are you going to be playing? Are you going to be limited? Are you not going to be playing? Hopefully limited. It depends on um, how my team does especially today. But um, yeah, I'm just excited to play. We know LSU does not have a lot of depth, so this is huge news that Poe will be available and possibly playing limited minutes. Um, I don't think they really need to rush her back, especially against Rice. They should be able to get it done with what they have right now. Um, but this is huge news, man. This gives um, LSU more bodies, more versatilities, and lets Kim Mulkey get more creative with these lineups, having another point guard out there who can guard the basketball very, very well, who could knock down the three, has become a more, uh, you know, respected scoring threat for this team. And you just wonder how she'll come back. Maybe there'll be a little bit of rust, but the big thing is she's healthy. She's overcome the concussion, and she's ready to get back in action and suit up for her squad. Um, you know, LSU, like we said, they need everybody they can get. They've suffered some injuries already earlier in the year, and now they get one back. So, big news for them. Last year, Poa has been playing really great basketball. Just the difference she makes when she comes in at point guard. On the defensive side, it's obvious, but also just running the flow of this offense. You know, she's able to play alongside Flage or Haley Van Lith and be that calming presence, that coach like player on the floor, so huge news for them and the Tigers as they get gear up to face Rice. Uh, last year, Paul, an important part of this group, man, and she could be an X factor for them running the gauntlet and getting back to the to the NCAA championship. So we'll see, man. Um, and then, of course, we got to talk about South Carolina, the number one overall seed in this region. They're locking up against Presbyterian in the first round out of North Carolina, a little cross-state action. Um... We heard we know Camila Cardoso is going to be out for this game, 
And we we know they they've played several games without Camilo Cardoso, so I, it's not going to be a problem. But it is noticed that you know she made a comment about her absence and you know how she's feeling. I'm very excited for them. They already played four games without me, so I know they're going to be fine. I'm just going to be right here cheering them on and just watching them be great out there. It's going to be really hard, but I feel like. What is the word? I don't know what's the word, but I feel like the punishment was right. Um, I think I made a mistake, and I'm learning from it. I'm going to grow for it. And I'm just excited to get out there on the court with them. She cannot be a part of pregame, um, can't be on the bench, um, can be in the facility. So she'll be here in the locker room watching the game. Is she allowed to practice today? Yes, she'll, she's allowed to do all, everything besides once uh, – once our team is out for, for pregame shooting. And Coach Don Staley, man, she has this group locked in. The focus has been different this year. I think we've all noticed that the focus, you know, they finished the season undefeated, but there's no letting up. And she's saying she's even ramped up practices to get this group ready. I want to um, instill the seriousness of what we're trying to do. Like, you, you our, our kids have, have played you know, free all season long um, without any pressure. And I just don't want the pressure of it all uh, for them to get caught off guard with it. So we had to apply some pressure and let them know what they're faced with. Because they, they really don't know. I mean, some of them have been a part of our national championship run. Some of them have been a part of uh, what happened to us last year. And we didn't get the, we didn't meet the moment or get the goal that we set out. Um, they don't think about any of that and the journey it took to get to those places. Um, so we wanted to just kind of create it a little bit so they'll, they'll know that we can't take any, anyone lightly. I'm happy. I'm happy we get a you know, great brand of uh, basketball um, on the floor. We got great coaches. We got great players. We got great storylines. We got, you know, we got, we're, we're probably the hot topic in, in March Madness of, of all of basketball, and I think that's a great thing. And I think it's because we, you know, we got the talent. Um, we have players who stand, they, you know, stand, they stay for graduation for a long time. And, you know, a lot of people thought that was probably, a, it's a disadvantage to, to, to women's basketball to not be able to, to go to the league after your, you know, after your freshman year. I think it's advantageous for us at this time. And this is, this is why, because we're bursting at the seams. Look, man, a locked-in focus South Carolina is dangerous for the rest of the nation. The Gamecocks come in with another level of focus that just was not there last year. I'm sorry to say uh, this group replacing five starters were not expected to be in the national championship conversation. They were more of the hunter at the beginning of the of the year, and now they are the hunted. They've proven that they are the cream of the crop, the best team in the nation, and it's everybody chasing South Carolina. I mean, we've just seen them dominate through 30-plus games, and, you know, even without their best player, who they, they've already missed for several games, they didn't skip a beat. They continue to roll on, um, you know, this front court, it's just incredible with Chloe Kitts, Sanaya Fagan, Ashlyn Watkins. The list goes on. You know, it's just a well-balanced oil machine. You have great guard play. You have three-point shooting, something they didn't have. Tahina Pow Pow has brought that to this team. Raven Johnson shooting the ball better. Bree Hall, Breezy letting that thing fly. Three-point shooting is actually a strength for this team. So this is the most dangerous that we've seen them in some time, I think. Um, you're not going to be able to pack the lane like you usually would when Aaliyah Boston and those guys were there. You're going to have to guard up and play man. You play zone, you're going to get shot out of the gym. You go one-on-one, -on -one and you better have some bigs that can compete. But it was good hearing from Coach Don Staley just where their mindset is, how they're feeling about this contest going up and starting this tournament run. All the pressure, all the expectations are on South Carolina to deliver. And, you know, there's an odds-on favorite to take this thing, and you got to start, like we said, take it one game at a time. As all three of these teams begin their tournament runs, you know, they dealt with a lot, man. I know also, um, you know, we mentioned Aaliyah Edwards went pro, but, you know, Angel Reese has also talked about that as well, man. Just how, you know, there's been so much talk, guys, about how 
when these college players leave, that they're giving up all this money, and they don't get the same treatment as these college programs as far as, like, the travel, noticeably, but Angel Reese seems pretty confident that her bag isn't going to stop when she leaves LSU. Um, For me, I've honestly learned that regardless, I'm going to be able to make money um, staying or going. Um, understanding that my brand has been built where I know that more than being in college is something that I can do. Um, like, I, like I have a brand outside of here where the deals are going to follow me if I leave or stay. And I've built that that relationship with a lot of these brands. I don't just have brands that are in college. I've had brands that are long-term deals that are just past college. And I think that's the difference. Like one of my Reebok deal, and I'm sure Haley's Adidas deal, that's going to go on past college. So, of course, we may not have the same benefits of – the same training rooms, the commercial flights and stuff like that. And I think, of course, that's that's the con of everything. But it's a win or lose situation regardless of the decision that we're going to make. But you have to make a sacrifice in understanding what is what you want and what it's going to take. So I don't know if that's like a hint at the future that she's made her decision. You know, we keep seeing in my one of my last videos, we mentioned that cryptic tweet that she had. Should she stay? Should she go? You know, we don't know what she's going to do yet. She hasn't announced, and I'm guessing it'll be after the tournament when she does. But we keep getting these subtle hints that that's the way it's leaning. And, you know, in many mock drafts, we're seeing Angel Reese going as early as fourth. You know, definitely a top seven, top ten pick. So it'll be interesting to see, but obviously she is feeling good about her financial situation moving forward, and that's not going to be something that keeps her at LSU. So we do know that much. Well, y'all let me know how y'all feel in the comments, man. You know, it was a lot of news we had to go through and get delivered, but it was an action-packed day for women's college basketball. And, you know, the tournament has started, but it ain't started started yet. So we'll really get going tomorrow. But y'all holler at me in the comments. Let me know how y'all feel about everything. That's a wrap for us. For all the latest and the greatest, I am Brandon Blakeney, a.k.a. Brandon Lee TV. Until next time, hey, we out.